since I mentioned this earlier before, you can also download stuff from Polyhaven as props or models that you don't want to model yourself. Just to show you how it's done, let's select something that I just want to put in my scene. Um, this bucket, for example. I don't want the high texture. The higher the texture, the more it needs to load. And since it's just a demonstration what we're doing here, download this one and then we're going to unzip it again and then I will see you in Blender. So once you have downloaded a prop that you want or maybe download the wooden bucket, press F4, then you have the link and append. The difference between them, if you want to import something from another blend file, let's say you created a table in another blend file and want to have this in a new scene, you can link it which means you just take the object, put it there, but you cannot edit it and it's just there. It saves up um, more of the calculation time. Not sure about that one, but you cannot really edit it. And we can also append it. And this one, let's just append it. Find the place wherever you saved the plant file you downloaded and unzipped and then click on the wooden bucket twice to open it up. Here you see everything that is in this blend file, but we just need to click on object and we are going to import what is written, wooden handle. We're just going to import everything. Press A or select everything and append. Now we can move it around. Let's put this bucket here in the corner randomly. Um, Textures are also there. Great. Move it down. And that's there. If you want to add some water in there, let's just do that. It wasn't planned, but you know what? It can fit nicely. Press Ctrl S and then cursor to select it. We're going to add the water by adding a circle. And in top view, just edit mode, scale it down. You can also go back to the select mode. Go up a bit and maybe scale it. And now if you press F in edit mode with everything selected, you will get this kind of uh, filling in of the face. And now we can add material. We're just going to make it really simple. We're going to give it a glossy material. We're going to go down with the roughness and Change the color to something bluish and there you have already your water. We can also go into the shader editor and then we're going to drag out this normal here and just look for noise. And what we will do too is press F3 and select or search for bump. And then select the bump, drag it over this button, over this line here. And what we should see now is it deforming. Put this into the height, let it load for a little bit. Okay, there we go. The strength is too high. Let's go down like that, for example. Nope, that's all gone. Okay, now we have some slight distorted, distorted water. All right, this is how you append stuff from Polyhaven. At this point, we don't really need our reference object anymore. We can hide it and get rid of it from the render on top here. And Blender crashed. If something like this happens to you and you didn't save, you can just pray. So Blender crashed. If something like this happens to you, then you can just open up Blender again and hope that it saved it for you. You can go to File, Recover, Auto Save, and then look for the latest file. All right, uh, that shows you the importance of saving because my file wasn't saved. So I have to go back to where I was. I'll see you. So I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. And we are going to go over to the materials. So the stairs, before I wanted to create a material on my own, but you know what? I'm just gonna use Blender's library here. 
there are a ton of videos how to create different kind of materials or you can just buy a material kit from Blender Market and then you don't have to worry about that anymore. So since I didn't save my preferences, I'm going to you have to activate the add-on again, the material library. And for the stairs, I need something with metal, polished walnut. I don't want a polished walnut. Metallic paint. Let's apply the metallic paint. There you go. You have a metallic paint right there. You can change the color. I want it to look a little bit more grayish. For the railing, we can do the similar thing. Uh, the railing should be galvanized steel. Apply it. Wait for it to render. And there are some shading issues because of the geometry and the way I auto smooth it. You can add some more subdivisions to give it a better or clearer look. Subdivision surface, go to simple and you can increase it or decrease it and play around with the, the size. But I will just slow down your computer even more. For the wall right here to have a slight difference let's look for something else a uh, glass shader we don't need that cranberry juice i don't want that but we can actually make a glass a cup that's a good idea building what is building brushed metal tiles and select tiles how will this look i'm gonna save for now before it crashes on me again and let's just rotate this again so it's smaller scale this one up and then you can look around and see what you want to change basically the one that's plugged into the color they will care the one that's plugged into the color it's the place where you can change the color but for now i'm just going to leave it like that maybe i'm going to change the steel color to something really neutral saturation hue value maybe go up like that what else is missing we have the shelf here and i don't i really don't like the tiles i'm just going to change it back to the bricks to the inner wall press the two up here to make it a new material because we use the wall and they share the same material. If you change one, the other one will change too. And let's just move it by 90 degrees to switch it around and scale this one up. By selecting everything, you can select, drag down, select, drag up, and then drag it up or down to have the same value. But this one was fine for me, I guess. For the door, let's select the new material and add, what else do we have? Soap bubble, no. What is polished walnut? All right, apparently that's polished walnut. Let's just change the scale. Um, make it a bit bigger. So it is not obvious that it's looking that disgusting. Move the door a little bit back. And what we can do, just to make this a bit more realistic, we can add a doorknob roughly here. Just import a sphere. Scale it down in edit mode. That's still too big. If you accidentally scale something down in object mode, you will notice the scale here. <coughs> if you press N, just press Ctrl A, scale, and the scale is set back to one. Uh, is this good enough for a doorknob? Yes, I guess. Give this a new material. And this one we are going to make anodized steel. Let's see how this looks like. Yeah, it's good enough. For the window, what we can do is select the window frame here. Press Alt and then select this edge right here 
to select all the faces and we can press F to give it a, to fill it in. That basically makes it redundant in the first place while we cut the window. But anyway, we can give this a new material and we can make this one transparent. Assign. Uh, yeah, assign and change the blend mode in the settings to alpha hashed. This way we have a transparent window. What we could do, since it didn't really change that much, we can add a principal PSDF back again, then press Control Alt, Control Shift, right click, and drag it to the transparent. Control Shift and drag it to the transparent. This way we will mix both the transparent and the principal PSDF. And there you can give it a small setting, 0.01. Drag down the roughness, so you have some shining going on here, some glowing. Since the table is a little bit empty, you can just import some more stuff from Polyhaven. Fill out the entire scene with stuff you either create, because this is not just about me giving you everything and you just do it. In the beginning, of course, you need to learn. But the more you practice yourself, the more you struggle. Like, how do I figure this out? How do I model this? The better you will be. And I see that I forgot to give the bookshelf the material. What can we do here? Soap bubble stars. What is wire musgrave? Oh no, that's disgusting. Maybe here we can use the polished walnut. Okay, that has something to it. You can give just a random color to each book. Make this slightly purplish. This one we're going to make, I don't know, greenish. And this one will be blue. By the way, you don't have to work in <laughs> rendered view all the time. I'm just so used to it, I forget it. But if your computer slows down, just go back into solid view. And for the dice, let's just add, you know, red color. There you have this. For the lamp, where would the lamp usually be in the room? It would be somewhere in the middle and it would be shining from above. And usually you have something like a cone, like that's shining the light onto it. You can change the cone shape, the size of it right here. Make it smaller. Let's make it a little bit brighter. Let's give it a thousand. Move it up. Let's give it a cooler color, more bluish. And then you can maybe add the same candlelight we had here by pressing Ctrl D and moving it towards the wall. Let's just see what we can do. Um, we can maybe add a candle there again. We can press cursor to select it by pressing Shift S. Then we're going to add a cube and then we are going to, you know what, I forgot to select the flame above, Shift D, and then we press Control S, uh, Shift S, selection to cursor, and there we will have our candle again. We just need to move it a little bit. What we can do is just make a platform for this candle, move it down a bit, this one is slightly above, scale it on the Y, scale it on the X. Uh, move it here. Let's add a mode, extrude it just a little bit to give it some thickness. The candle, we can also give it some material. I know this is a little bit quicker now, but I feel like you already know the basics. You just need to stop maybe sometime, go back a few seconds 
and then at one point it just clicks and you know what I mean. So molten, I don't want my candle to be molten. High glossy plastic, let's see what that looks like. Okay, our candle will be red like this. Our platform right here, I'm going to, where was the anodized one? Let's just put the platform right here. And we have our lights right there. If you want to have a good balance of exposure, how bright your scene is, you can go down to the render, to the render settings, color management, and then select on the view transform false color. False color basically shows you blue is really underexposed, really dark, and it goes all the way to red and white. And it's really when the when it cannot be really defined anymore, like white is topping up what the, what can be shown and there's you lose all the detail so too bright or too dark you lose detail you want to be in this greenish reddish area i if i duplicate this light you can see i get more into the greenish area from the top view everything is red because it's reflective but our camera doesn't catch that Maybe I'm going to add another one, shifty, move it around. And let's see if this looks more pleasing. It's brighter. Yeah, that looks better. Our water is also still there, reflective. For now, I'm just going to leave it like that.